I'm going to die. I'm so tired. Everything hurts. Running is impossible. Some actors get really committed to their roles, to the point that they'll radically change their appearance just to get into character. I'm muscular. But who are you kidding, Well, You're one sandwich away from fat. Yeah, right. That's true. You have to put on weight. What? Robert De Niro has done this time and time again. He trained as a boxer to play young Jake LaMotta and gained a ton of weight to play old Jake LaMotta in the same movie. There have been a ton of cases like this where actors have gotten ripped to play an action role. Here are the 10 who are the most dedicated. Woo! Vin Diesel for Fast Five. He's gonna flip out, though. You're doing too much right now. Diesel time. Diesel time! Diesel! Vin Diesel's workout to get in shape for Fast Five is a favorite among fitness enthusiasts. It was a retooling of the franchise, so he figured he might as well retool his body, too. Diesel works out for three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Monday, he does chest, triceps, and shoulders. On Wednesday, he does back and biceps. And on Friday, he does arms and legs. He tends to do either four sets of between five and six reps or three sets of between 10 and 12 reps, depending on the exercise. The actor has various tips for working out and dieting and getting in shape. What are you, like 220, 230? Be honest. 250 is like the hard max for my swing. <laughs> oh, come on. For one, he says that you should eat between six and eight small meals per day, rather than the usual three big ones. He recommends that you focus on strengthening your core because that's where all of it comes from. That's why they call it your core, after all. He also speaks highly of the importance of breathing properly while you're lifting because it improves cardiovascular conditioning. Breathe. By following this regime, Diesel has become famous for having huge arms and huge pecs and a toned set of abs, so he must be doing something right. I'm kidding. It's not like I have a safe word or anything. It's come quiet. Liking this video so far? Then take a second and flex your muscles and hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Tom Hardy for Warrior. Let's go! While it wasn't a huge hit at the box office, Warrior is kind of a brilliant movie. The critics praised it for being an emotionally charged story about family and brotherhood. So it focuses on wider themes, which is what makes it such a great sports movie. But it's still a movie about mixed martial arts, so the actors starring in it had to be match fit. Yo, Rock, what'd you do? Did you leave Mick and Polly at home today? <laughs> To play Tommy Reardon, a former U.S. Marine and current MMA fighter, Tom Hardy had to get into serious shape. He was working out four times a day, doing a lot of short workouts rather than one big one. So instead of hitting the gym for a couple of hours and killing himself, Hardy would work out in small amounts, but often. His trainer explains, I call my philosophy signaling. Throughout the day, you need to send constant signals to your body so that it adapts in the direction that you point it in. It's better to do 10 press-ups every hour than 100 in a single burst. If you do things often enough, your body adapts for the task you set it and you evolve. Hey, let's not stand on ceremony here. The trainer goes on to say that the most important thing to remember is that there are no shortcuts. It's Tom. It's Tom from <laughs> Sylvester Stallone for The Expendables. Heads up. Sly Stallone has always been known for being buff. After all, his big break was Rocky, which was a very physically demanding role since he played a boxer who had to get into even better shape in the space of a montage. But that was when he was a young man. The ensemble action piece The Expendables came a few decades into his career, and it was a return to the kind of old school action pictures that made him one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Rocky! Hey, Jim. Rocky! Hey. Stallone had previously worked with Mr. Olympia champion Franco Columbu to build up muscle for his roles like Rocky Balboa or John Rambo. For the role of Barney Ross in The Expendables, What about the hang? I am the hang. He went for smarter, more focused workouts. He said, Now I focus on a variety of exercises, working out three times a week for 90 minutes per session. I feel really good, much stronger than I've ever felt, actually. Something must be working. For 1997's Copland, for which Stallone was praised since it was a real three dimensional role with some dramatic weight rather than just a one dimensional action role, the actor gained 40 pounds and let go of his perfect bodybuilder physique to look more believable as a tired, aging sheriff. And you blow it! Gerard Butler for 300. This is Sparta!
When Gerard Butler was training to be in the adaptation of the graphic novel 300, he set himself a very specific goal, and that was to impress even the stuntmen. I, I mean, I started three months before we even came to Montreal. He explained, I was surrounded by hundreds of stuntmen who were amazing. Stuntmen are my favorite people on a film set, but I had this thing that really helped me get through, which was a thought in my head like, if I can train in such a way that they're actually going, he's a badass? Because I know stuntmen and they like actors, but mostly they see them as wet blankets. I wanted to be an example to the other actors and to the stunt guys that, you know, I wasn't just some guy coming in and playing the king. I wanted to train in a way so they would actually take their hats off to me, and in a way so that you would believe that they actually would follow me. I was working out six hours a day, two hours with them, two hours during the 300 workout, and two hours with my own bodybuilder, pumping 25 times before each take. But I was also surrounded by a lot of guys putting in a lot of other effort too. It was great having that unity of purpose, both as an army and in terms of what we were trying to make in this movie, and in terms of fitness, of course, training and that warrior spirit. They look thirsty! <laughs> well, let's give them something to drink! It was a very powerful place to be. Michael B. Jordan for Black Panther. Is this your king? Huh? Is this your king? Celebrity trainer Corey Kaliak got Michael B. Jordan in serious shape to play a boxer in Creed, but that was nothing compared to their grueling regime for Black Panther. Nah, I'm your king. In order to play the villainous role of Eric Killmonger in the critically acclaimed Marvel hit, Calliot had Jordan working out six days a week and eating six meals a day to gain 15 pounds of muscle. Jordan and Calliot began working out together during the production of 2015's Fantastic Four reboot. When the production began, according to Calliot, the actor could barely lift 25 pounds, but by the end, the producers told them to slow down because Jordan could hardly fit into his human torch costume anymore. For Black Panther, Calliot had Jordan doing less cardio than when he was training to play a boxer in Creed. He needed to gain serious muscle to play the role of Killmonger. The Black Panther, who's about to lead you into the future? Calliot said, he told me I need to look like this, and it's a picture of Killmonger fighting Black Panther. He was very big. So Calliot knew he had to make Jordan look like a free safety or a Marine. If you want to be a villain, you gotta have that savage type of demeanor. Jake Gyllenhaal for Southpaw. Let's go! The movie Southpaw is kind of beautiful, because it's not really a movie about boxing, it's a movie about a father's relationship with his daughter. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so predictable. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal in a lead role, and he actually didn't get all the recognition that he deserved for this performance, which might even be Oscar caliber stuff. Gyllenhaal was so dedicated to getting this role right, in preparation for getting into the mindset of the character, he did tons of reading on boxers, orphan boxers, the spirit of gyms all over America, children who start early, and the history of foster care in America. Why can't you just get me out of this place? Why do you know? I can't. I you're can't not. right now. You're not. And physically, he didn't even really train to play a boxer. He trained to be a boxer. Gyllenhaal explains, I went into full training camp mode and I got myself, what I consider in my mind as an actor, in shape to fight. I was literally learning the skills of boxing, which is not only for the body, but also for the mind. You can't play a boxer and just look like a boxer. You have to believe you can exist in that world. Honestly, I just trained like a boxer for five months. We shot the fights in the first two weeks of the movie, so I trained basically for five months up until those fights. We shot four fights in a row over roughly two weeks. But I basically trained how a professional boxer would. This is the same guy who got his big break for playing a brooding, dorky goth in the movie Donnie Darko. I think you're into Christ. <laughs> how the times do change. Josh Brolin for Deadpool 2. Oh, we'll that's what you we think by looking at me because no, I'm I, twice your size. No, I look at this. I look at that. I look oh, at that, wow. okay? At the age of 49, Josh Brolin still managed to get a superhero body to play the role of Cable in Deadpool 2. His transformation impressed even his Avengers Infinity War co-star Dave Bautista, who when he saw his changed body asked him, what the f happened to you? A handsome, muscular man. Brolin called this the best compliment ever. Men's Health Magazine and its team of experts have poured over Brolin's Instagram posts from his workouts in the lead up to the production of the sequel in order to ascertain just how he did it. As it turns out, it was mostly just hard work and dedication. You know, like any healthy change. But they did find some useful little nuggets that can be applied to your own workouts. Apparently, he utilized drop sets a lot. He would start high and then go for lower and lower weights until he couldn't even lift up the weight of his own arms anymore. This is a technique that a lot of bodybuilders use, and it's clearly very effective. Effective. He also did a lot of shoulder work to broaden his physique. His diet, totally clean. No sugar, no breads, no pastas, no drugs, none of it. 
fish, rice, eggs, veggies, and water. This man was dedicated to achieving the muscle-bound appearance of Cable from the comic books, and to the extent that a human can, he succeeded. Christian Bale for Batman Begins. I'll probably just throw him out now, though, right? Hey, perfect fit. <laughs> Christian Bale underwent a radical change for one role and then underwent another radical change completely in the other direction for another role. It was actually quite astounding. First, he lost 62 pounds, bringing his total body mass down to 120 in order to play the gaunt, insomniac character of Trevor Resnick in the dark psychological thriller The Machinist, which itself was inspired by the works of Fyodor Dostoevsky. He actually wanted to get his weight down to 99 pounds, but the producers wouldn't let him because they were concerned about his health and they have to ensure him to even let him be in the movie. So basically, Bale was even more committed to the role than he was allowed to be. He lost so much weight with a ridiculously minimal diet of water, an apple, and one cup of coffee per day, with the occasional whiskey. And then right after that role, he had to gain a hundred pounds back in order to play the muscular role of Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins. Nice coat. He started lifting a ton of weights and eating a ton of pizza and ice cream to get his weight back up. And actually, in the end, he ended up going too far in the other direction, putting on so much weight that the producers were worried about having a fat, unagile Batman. So he had to lose weight again. I broke you. How have you come back? What a roller coaster his poor body went through that year. Zac Efron for Baywatch. Out on my own, it's such a scary place. Ooh. Zac Efron may have been nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor for his rather cliched performance in the underwhelming Baywatch. You'd find me on the beach. So, yeah. But one thing you can't fault him on is his physique in that movie. He was cast alongside Dwayne The Rock Johnson, aka the most buff actor in Hollywood, and he took on the challenge to match his brawn. Efron worked out with Patrick Murphy, who says the actor managed to get his body fat content down to just 5% in 12 weeks of training. I wanna make it right, that is the way to turn my life around today. Train in periods of three alternating days, one day for back and biceps, another day for legs, and another day for shoulders, chest, and arms, with a little bit of abs thrown in every day. The results speak for themselves. There's even a scene where Efron gets into a lifting competition with Johnson and actually manages to hold his own. It's kind of awesome. This is a guy from High School Musical squaring off against a former pro wrestler who weighs 260 pounds. Well, no free passes. Whoa, at all. According to Murphy, Efron also adopted an all-organic whole food diet, consisting of lean proteins and whole grains and healthy fats and high-fiber fruits and all kinds of vegetables. Your fellow actors are tomatoes. You gotta cut them up. They're your enemy. Doesn't that just sound terrible? Chris Pratt for Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't say superhero. Out of curiosity, when you're looking out for these children, we be wearing any kind of cape? I didn't say superhero. Some found it unusual that Chris Pratt had been offered the lead role in a Marvel superhero blockbuster movie where he was going to be an action hero and a love interest. <laughs> she just told everyone your deepest, darkest secret. Because for so many years, we'd gotten to know him as Andy Dwyer, the simple, chubby, excitable schlub from Parks and Recreation. I just traded Finland's military to Kenya for 50 lions. So no way could he pull off the role of Star-Lord. But then we saw that selfie from the gym. He was thin, he was muscular, he had rippling abs. It was triumphant. He lost 60 pounds in six months on a very strict diet and exercise regime. It really shows in the movie too, as he plays the most physically demanding role we've ever seen him in. And he genuinely looks like a buff, muscular guy. And then in Avengers Infinity War, all that got flipped on his head as the Guardian started calling him fat. Are you making your voice deeper? No, <gasps> you are. He just did it again. You're entertaining the god this man. This is my voice. When Thor boards the ship and they gush over his muscles and good looks, Star-Lord says, I'm muscular. And then the Guardians start saying things like, who are you kidding, Quill? You're one sandwich away from fat. And you have gained a little weight. So Star-Lord says, wow, this is a real wake-up call for me. I'm going to commit. I'm going to get some dumbbells. Then Rocket quips, you know you can't eat dumbbells, right? You want me a beer? All right. Ouch. Do you ever miss being a bit fat? <laughs> I am still a bit fat. No, you are not. Help us bulk up by hitting that subscribe button and clicking that notification bell. And while you're here, check out some of our other videos.